So this is a look at groovers uh, and why go pro. Um, we have an adjustable groover um, and also to answer a question about left handedness, which we get asked with the groovers quite often. Um, so the adjustable groover has a little screw at the end and you have a blade going through like so. There's a little hole at the end of here, which is your blade and it cuts by butting up this bit here against the edge and going down and you get a lovely little tail coming off. Very satisfying. Um, giving you your lovely neat channel for your stitches. Now, if you're left-handed, you'd think that you could maybe just unscrew it and put it the other way, but you can't. It, this is definitely a right-handed tool. You can use it left-handed, but it's kind of awkward. Those of us that are left-handed know all about awkward tools. Um, if you wanted to use it, you'd need to turn it around in your hand and you drag it away from you and down. So it is possible, but it's just awkward. The other method that you can do is to use the um, freehand groover, which is this tool here. Um, love this tool. Um, this you can do freehand little shapes and drawings in engraving into the leather. So just as a little wee example, a little leaf on the leather with the freehand groover. And we'll put a little stem just because, why not? Um, so that's the freehand groover. So obviously if you're doing that, what you would then do um, is to use your ruler to give you your seam and your measuring up and then you would take your line down the leather, butting up against the ruler. Okay, so you don't really have the benefit of a seam guide using this one, but it is an option if you're left-handed. Sorry if I just used it. I think I used it in my left hand. Um, so that's the freehand groover. Now, why would you maybe consider going pro with your groover? There's a number of reasons. Um, this is the pro groover tool. So you get with it um, a little tiny screwdriver which changes the little nut here. Um, and with that, you can unscrew that and change the blade. So you get given a little modeling spoon like that, or you get given your groover blade there. Now you can see the hole with me holding it up against there for the groover. And you also get the, the guide now this works in a different way. So we've got the groover in the tip centre here and I've tightened this in position. So there is another hole here for the guide to sit in. So the guide will go through and I'll just loosen that chuck off and then I can turn that and make that however I want my stitch seam allowance to be. So I've tightened the chuck there, that's the chuck bit there tightened up that guide. I can now use this to go down and carve out my channel. Get a similar size channel. Uh, you can generally go a bit deeper. The main reason being is that you can put all the pressure through this center rather than off center um, with the other one. And when you're going through the center, you're less likely to veer away and um, you've got a lot more control with it um, when you're working. So that's one big advantage is that the actual effort that you're putting through is going right down through the centre rather than off to one side um, with the, as opposed to this one. Now, good news if you're left-handed too, because it's just about the guide. So you can undo the chuck, put, the, put it in the other way up, and then turn that and tighten on that side and you now have a left-handed groover. So you can butt it up here, much the same, and down we go, 
grooving. So that only leaves the question <laughs> on the pro, what is the little spoon for? So the little spoon is really just when you're using these kind of lines and you want them more decoratively, it's a way of like polishing out those lines so you can then go over them and burnish into them. So if I remove the chuck off and undo my little screw and I'll pop my spoon in. When you're replacing the blades, make sure you keep the other ones safe somewhere and make sure you put it in the right way round. Um, you'll see pretty soon, so do it on a test if you're not sure that you've got it in the right way. So I've got that tightened in and I'll put my chuck on left-handed. And then if I wanted, I can, you can use this like heated as well, just to do a heat line, or you can use it to rub in and just bevel that line. If I go a bit further, I'll show you how to get more of just a decorative feature with it. So this is more, you see this on some belts and some fashion things. It's much more of a subtle kind of, uh, pressing in line rather than carving out. I think it will show up on the camera. So you get this much more subtle kind of decorative feature. And that's the difference in the um, groovers. Love this groover, use it all the time, um, but there are some advantages to the pro groover and particularly if you're left-handed. Um, and some other advantages too about the center point of gravity. So if you are doing a lot and you're going, particularly if you're working on heavier leather, it can be an advantage. Mm -hmm.